Maybe you just set up your first fish tank and you want to give fish keeping a try, but you want to start off with an easier or less costly fish. Or maybe you already have several aquariums and are wanting to try a new fish that is inexpensive. Today I'm going to share with you a list of five fish that you should consider. Hi everyone, I'm Zenzo with Aquarium Co-op. There are many types of aquarium fish to choose from, and today we're gonna go over some fish that won't break the bank. The first fish on my list are guppies. Guppies are inexpensive and readily available in fish stores all over the world. It is true that some higher end guppies can be expensive, but there are plenty of beautiful guppies that are very affordable. Because guppies are hardy and can handle a wide range of water parameters, they make an excellent choice for both beginner and experienced fish keepers. Guppies are live bearers, meaning that they give birth to fully formed fish rather than eggs. This can be extremely rewarding for those that want to see new fish spawning in their aquariums and can also be great for children as well. Guppies can bring you years of enjoyment as they will continually replenish their population. These easy to care for fish can also be profitable if you sell them at local fish clubs or even a local store. Guppies can be kept in tanks as small as five gallons, but because they are prolific breeders, you may want to have them in a bit larger of a tank, like 10 gallons, so they have room to expand their group. Guppies can be kept with other peaceful fish around the same size, but a guppy-only tank can be great on its own. If you want to start off with your new aquarium, I would recommend a trio with one male and two females. In just a couple of months, you'll have many more beautiful guppies to enjoy. The next fish on my list is one that can also be found in almost any pet store, can be inexpensive, but are also sometimes misunderstood. That fish is the betta. Bettas or betta splendens are beautiful tropical fish that have many great qualities. For one, they are arguably one of the most beautiful fish in the freshwater hobby. They also have an organ called a labyrinth organ that allows them to take in oxygen from the atmosphere in addition to being able to breathe underwater through their gills. This makes them great for beginners as this allows them to tolerate less than ideal water conditions if you happen to make a mistake. Bettas are excellent centerpiece fish for small to medium sized planted aquariums and can be kept with other fish as long as they are very different in appearance and won't nip at the betta's long fins. Examples of fish that can be kept with bettas are bottom dollars like corridors or coolie loaches, schooling fish like tetras and resboras, and even your favorite pet snails. Make sure to avoid keeping your betta with another betta or a garami as they can be extremely territorial and will fight with their own kind or fish that are cousins. As far as being misunderstood, when you see bettas in stores, you often find them in small containers or jars. Know that this is only for temporary store sales shelves and bettas should not be kept this way at home. Bettas are tropical fish and require warmer temperatures, so use a heater. They should also be kept in at least a five gallon aquarium that has a filter with low flow. With lots of colors and shapes to choose from, bettas can be a wonderful addition to your aquarium. How about an inexpensive fish for your aquarium that doesn't have a heater? For this, I'm gonna recommend the White Cloud Mountain Minnow. White clouds are sometimes sold as feeder fish, but are also beautiful fish to keep as pets. With their gray to gold coloration with a white horizontal stripe and bright red fins, they look great in your unheated planted aquarium. Like other fish on this list, white clouds are extremely hardy and can live in a wide pH range from 6.5 to 8.5 and temperatures from the mid 60s to mid 70s, making them ideal for tanks kept at room temperatures. They can even tolerate much cooler temperatures, even surviving in outdoor ponds through colder winter months. White clouds are not very large and can be kept in aquariums as small as 10 gallons. Tank mates for white clouds should be other peaceful inhabitants that like cooler water, like hillstream loaches, smaller killifish, and even shrimp. White clouds are one of the easiest egg scattering fishes to breed. Have some floating plants with root structures or tight leaf patterns, and in just a few months, you may see some very tiny baby fish swimming at the surface. Make sure that you have some very fine food on hand to feed the newly hatched babies. I like to use easy fry food or finely crushed flakes. White clouds are actually endangered in the wild due to loss of habitat, so keeping them and sharing them with others keeps this fish in the hobby. Are you looking for an inexpensive, beautiful fish that's a little bit larger, can be kept in groups, and also gives birth to live babies? If you are, I recommend choosing mollies. Mollies, like the guppies that I shared early in this video, are live bearers, but much larger and to some people more impressive. There are many types of mollies with varying color patterns and fin variations and shapes, but they all are as easy to keep as the next. 
Some of those smaller mollies may stay around three inches in size, but we have also seen them grow quite large, upwards of five inches in length. One of the things that makes mollies so great is that they are some of the hardiest fish in the hobby and can be kept in fully freshwater aquariums all the way to full salt water. Very few other fish in the hobby can make that claim. However, because most mollies are bred in brackish farms overseas, if you have very soft tap water, be sure to add some minerals to help them flourish. You can do this by adding a product like Equilibrium or dropping in a Wonder Shell. Because these fish are larger and more active than some of the other fish on this list, we recommend that mollies be kept in medium-sized aquariums or larger, starting at around 29 gallons. Mollies can be kept with a wide range of tank baits like Corydoras, Danios, Loaches, Barbs, and other live bearers. Because mollies are live bearers, expect to see your molly population grow. Last but not least, let's talk about one of the most inexpensive fish available and one that you are certain to find in pretty much every fish store. Goldfish. While some of the fancier goldfish variants can be expensive, the more common types are about as cheap as fish come and are often sold as feeders in pet stores. I actually have several of these feeder type goldfish in my pond that have grown into beautiful fish that I enjoy every day. Goldfish can be very hardy and also tolerate a wide range of water conditions. Just know that if you select fish from a feeder tank, you may want to treat them with medications or aquarium salt to help with any bacterial infections or parasites. Goldfish, like the White Cloud Mountain Minnow, do not need a heater and actually prefer cooler temperatures. So having them in your unheated aquarium kept at room temperatures is just fine. Now goldfish are larger than some of the other fish on this list and require more space. If you're keeping this one fancier goldfish, you could have one in like a 20 or 29 gallon aquarium, but for the common variants, I would recommend keeping them in larger tanks of at least 40 to 55 gallons so that they can grow. A drawback to goldfish is that they can be hard on certain aquarium plants. If you want to keep them in a planted aquarium, I recommend choosing hardier plants with broad leaves and even using something like an easy planter to prevent your plants from being uprooted. For tank mates, a dojo or weather loach can be a good fish to keep with goldfish as they can tolerate similar temperatures. The white cloud mountain minnows, rice fish, and even hillstream loaches can be great additions to your goldfish aquarium. Avoid any fish that are small enough to fit in the mouth of the goldfish, especially if they have barbells like small Corydoras or Autosynclus. Hopefully this gave you some ideas on some inexpensive fish for you to try if you have a new aquarium or if you've built your 15th tank. Now we have care guides on our website for all of the fish listed and we'll link those down below for you to learn more. Now what are some other fish that are inexpensive that we didn't talk about in this video? Let us know down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to enjoy nature daily and check out this other video right here that we thought you might like as well.